Hi folks, we are now at the Smog Creek Gardens. This is a garden featured on the tour of the Open Gardens. It is in the town of Hamburg. So we are with Cassie, the gardener here. Hi. So join us for a walk at this spectacular garden and see what's going on here. So we are at actually at the top of a hillside. Mm -hmm. And so there's a slope down from here. We have a magnificent, uh, this is not a bad, this is a garden area. Mm -hmm. This is more like a hillside garden. We have a plethora of different plants, giant hostas, daylilies, and lots, lots of the uh, primrose. This is primrose, mm -hmm. uh, primrose japanica. Yeah. And uh, they have this lovely, lovely flower in early, uh, late, late spring. Late spring. Late yeah. spring to early summer. They flower for a surprisingly t long time. Mm -hmm. And they tend to send out additional shoes to <laughs> give you additional blossom, yes. uh, even after the first uh, uh, flush pass. Yes, mm -hmm. and I leave the seed inside mm -hmm. so that I'll have more. Yes, yeah, so you let them self seed, yes. and you have more. Yeah, this is lovely. Let's walk through and uh, take a look at this magnificent hillside garden. So there are some more sunny patches, so where we can see the daylily, but for the more shady area, we have the fern, we have the hostas, and we have the pachysandra and the vincas. So really, this in this area, we have so many different plants going on. Look at this tiny hosta. This is a miniature hosta, mm -hmm. and uh, this is planted in a container carved out of a stone, right? Yeah with moss on the back. This is just very, very unique, which really just uh, add another dimension of character and charm to your garden. We have some of the European ginger, and those are the hellebores, yes. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not only you have uh, so many different varieties of daily, you also have the lily, which mm -hmm. is not easy to grow. You have the deer, you have the bunny, you have the beetle. I, 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 tree for every day. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, the lily is so lovely, mm -hmm. particularly the fragrant variety, but you have to be prepared to mm -hmm. work for it. Yeah. yeah. Not only we have the planting, we have more than a few garden arts hiding between the plants. I'm not sure if the viewer can spot them, but if you come here to visit Cassie's garden in person, you will be surprised. Yeah, there are so many beautiful garden art. Some of them, uh, you found them at the garden art sale by yes. Gardens Buffalo Niagara. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's usually at the end of June on the ground of the Botanic Garden. Yep. But it is an event by Gardens Buffalo Niagara. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's the cake <laughs> Yes, exactly. Yeah. So let's walk down the path on the hillside. Then we'll get to uh, the area right next to the house. So the house is actually very, very special. I'll show you in a minute. Oh, we have more of the lily. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so the one with the variegated leaf, is that a red bud? Yes. Oh, that's, that's a very, yeah. 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 That is a very special variety. I've never seen one. Mm -hmm. So is this a recent addition? Yeah, yeah it's oh. young. It's about two years old. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what kind of color do they have in the autumn? Um, I'm not really oh, sure. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then you'll be a surprise. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Look at this hillside bun, uh, uh, hillside ga uh, garden area. So we are we are in probably around noon. So this is probably the most sunny mm -hmm. time of the day. And uh, so the plants, they can enjoy some sun, but they're not baking under the sun all mm -hmm. day long. So, some, so many of the plants, they really appreciate this kind of a sun situation. Yeah. Let me take a sp spin. So is this a magnolia? That's a fringe tree. A fringe tree, yeah. yeah. I see. It's so fragrant. Fragrant. It, it is a native tree. Native. But not many people grow it. Oh, okay, here. I see. So people, if you're looking for a fragrant native variety uh, 
This, I would call this a, like a large shrub, small tree. Then the fringe tree would be a good candidate. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Kenzie, show like us the show us the creek okay. and the house. So you see, this is actually on. Dur so I'm filming during the open garden. Yeah. yeah, there is a steady flow of visitors. Yeah. So again, we are at Smart Creek Gardens in Hamburg, and uh, we are. This is a garden featured on the tour of the open gardens by Gardens Buffalo Niagara. Well, it's a mouthful. <laughs> 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 but I have to get information correct and let people know the Gardens Buffalo Niagara is the organization who organized so many wonderful garden events in the Buffalo Niagara region in the summer, pr primarily in July. But our gardening season, event season, actually spans from uh, uh, June all the way to October. So if you are a garden lover, you follow us, check out the website from Gardens Buffalo Niagara. Mm -hmm. So now we are looking at the creek. So this is the Smart Creek. This is Smart Creek. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's actually just a tributary, a tributary. to um, Back Creek. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we moved here, we uh -huh. felt so fortunate uh -huh. um, that our name was Shadrach, and uh -huh. we called ourselves the Smug Rack uh -huh. because we uh -huh. felt so fortunate. Yeah. So. This became Smug Creek. So the creek actually run underneath the house. The house runs right underneath the house. Okay. Uh -huh. So the house is built on top of the creek. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. That that is very very unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I always see the garden. A garden it serves the structure. Mm -hmm. And the structure has to rely on the landscape. So this would be an ideal example. We have the hillside slope. We have the creek. They are very unique. Then mm -hmm. this is how the house was built to, to take advantage of this landscape. Then after the house, there are more than a few garden, large garden area built on the landscape surrounding the building. Mm -hmm. So that is how the garden become how they are now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you're yeah. right. The yeah. landscape tells yeah. you what to do. Yeah. So let's take a look at the hillside garden area mm -hmm. from the bottom. You can see under the sun, practic practically the color, they're just the sparkling. Yeah, yeah. You have different color of the daylily. Even the white flower from the hostel, they just complement mm -hmm. with the other color so nicely. So this is just one section of the garden. Cassie, mm -hmm. can you show us the other section? Yep. You have the, uh, you have, <laughs> do you have a count of the container? Plans. No. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, and I figured every good gardener they have to lost count. Yes. Otherwise, <laughs> it's not a good gardener. Yeah. But we we'd like to say we have four garden areas. Four garden areas. Yes. One is the terraces that the, we just looked at. The terrace garden we just look at. Mm -hmm. One is the new garden that we're going to. Mm -hmm. One is the containers because there's so many that you, yeah. they constitute yeah. a garden. Yeah. And then there's a miniature pasta garden yeah. on its own. Exactly. And I think uh, <coughs> there's a reason, there's a logic behind all those smaller containers for smaller plants. Because if you plant them in the bed, it's not going to be able to see them. Right. Yeah, they're going to be uh, disappearing behind those larger plants. So you really want mm -hmm. to use smaller container to really showcase the plant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with different type of plant, uh, you have right. to use things in the right scale to showcase uh, their beauty. <laughs> so now we are arriving at the. Uh, at the front of the house, we see there are so many containers, rice plants. You have Japanese maple and, of course, hostas, and also annuals, the dragonwing begonia. They're just so striking, so lovely. And uh, let me take a closer view of the 
mini hosta container garden area. Yeah, and see, hostas are architectural, so they do well in a pot because the chills off their corn. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a very good point. Yeah. And uh, they most host a variety, they are very cold hardy. So we are mm -hmm. in USDA zone, so, uh, so you are in five or six. six. So USDA zone six, so they can handle the winter, even in container. Yes. But you have more than a few good tips mm -hmm. and uh, very good practice with the container. Tell us how, uh, what special step do you do to help them winterize? Well, if, if a host is planted directly in a ceramic pot like this, mm -hmm. then it has to go in the garage because the host is hardy, the pot's not. Okay, yeah. So, so mm -hmm. it goes in a sheltered area. I but see. a lot of these If they're in are, a plastic nursery pot, they should, yeah. they, they, you, you do not have to bring them inside. No. So bring them inside is pr primarily to preserve the terracotta. Yes. So our climate is not kind to care, to, to the terracotta no. pottery, <laughs> yeah, especially some of the unique ones that you would like to save. So, so for the terracotta, you want to bring them into a sheltered area yes. to, to, to keep them uh, away from the rain with the ice and snow. Yes, mm -hmm. and we don't water, we don't do anything. So you do not water at all? So not at all. Oh, okay. No. Not until we see growth in okay. the spring. Uh -huh. yes. yeah, you, so, so for some of the uh, container, you also double them up. Mm -hmm. So uh, in addition to the nursery pots, you put another layer of container yeah. on top of it. So this just provides an extra layer of insulation. It's just uh, kind of a normalized uh, fluctuation of the temperature mm -hmm. and everything. So the roots would definitely appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a stunning display. So this is a garden arts, right? Uh, Jim Charlie. So he made that. He made yeah. It. So I so I tell people he's he's just extra extraordinary crafty. Yeah. Very, very crafty. Yes, <laughs> yeah, let's take a closer look at the birdhouse. Do you see birds nesting yet? No. Or? No? Okay. Yeah. So I think he made it from reclaimed uh, fans. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it used to have a wine bottle on top, oh, okay. but I kept it in the house and I knocked it over. Oh, okay. but I mean, it's time for him to make another one for <laughs> you. <laughs> so we put the bird up there. It's lovely. I yeah, I yeah, really enjoy this original garden arts made mm -hmm. with re reclaimed, repurposed material. Otherwise, they're going to be landing the landfill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean old fans yeah look at the container planting yeah. hostas you even have ginkgo mm -hmm. miniature ginkgo in the container mm -hmm. and another ginkgo is this yeah. a miniature or it's a seedling this is a variegated variety oh variegated mm -hmm. yeah. lovely you can really showcase some of the miniature hosta in the container. Yeah, let me take a spin. It's just lovely. Mm -hmm. So let's walk through the deck area. And, uh, and, and these, you know, like under your maple tree, you can get oh. the different containers in uh -huh. range. Yeah, so you're not only you're sh not only you're showing off different plants, you're also showing off your containers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just bring so much joy. Yeah. So we're now, on, now we're entering another garden area, which mm -hmm. I was told this is Cassie's personal favorite mm -hmm. area at this time of year. Yeah. yeah. We have uh, different things blooming right now, in addition to the daylilies. We have the hydrangea, and you have more than a few tomatoes mm -hmm. too, right? Yeah. So where do you want us to? Do you want to? How about <laughs> let's go to see the gate area, then okay. make a turn to see the, uh, see Fiona. We want to meet Fiona. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she's the garden spirit. Garden spirit. Yeah.
So you see there are more garden arts, very nicely placed uh, in the middle of different uh, borders. It just adds charm and interest in addition to the plantings. So this is a very shaded area mm -hmm. and you can see the meadow rule, they can take the shade quite well. It's magnificent. Yeah, and they have this dainty uh, flower. So is this a native variety? Or yeah. So, okay. This is a native plant called meadow rue. They have this very tall form. They look very delicate, but they're surprisingly robust. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the leaf look like columbine a little bit. Yes. But uh, if you see them in person, you will realize this is a huge, huge, I would say seven, eight feet tall, oh, yeah. brand new. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely not columbine. This yeah. is pretty compact and short. Mm -hmm. I want to show you this kind of, uh, so this is a pa passage to the wooded area mm -hmm. and uh, Cassie placed this uh, metal gates there. It just gives you a sense of entry, a sense of destination. It, it kind of intrigues you, mm -hmm. make you want to enter this new area to explore more, even though it's just a woody area mm -hmm. and uh, it just make the garden, it, it really extend the garden beyond the limit yeah. of your fans just by adding a gate can do so much this is very beautiful and another example i want to show is how to use a uh, garden object so for example cassie placed this very reflective uh, almost like mirror type of a material gazing ball with a giant hosta so it's a very simple design the garden but uh, it show off the hosta and you have this very different texture uh, on the gazing ball. It's simple yet very striking. We also have color in the garden. So you try to use colorful chairs so they stay in this brightful color even before, uh, in, even before all the perennial or mm -hmm. annual get into the flowering months. So you, you can have a splash of color year round. This is a very peaceful garden. So again, we are at Smug Creek Garden in Hamburg, New York. And uh, it's on the tour of the open gardens, which opens on Friday, this particular garden, Fridays in July. Yes. So now we are meeting the garden spirit, Fiona. So tell about where you, where you originally <laughs> found yes. Fiona. Yeah, there was a department store closing down mm -hmm. and my husband was looking at dress shirts uh -huh. and I was looking at fixtures. Uh -huh. So I saw the mannequin uh -huh. and I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to mm -hmm. have one in painted purple? Yeah. So uh -huh. we bought it and painted her purple, yeah. and she's, she's perfect. She's yeah. in the tree position. Yes, doing yoga, mm -hmm. 24 hour a day. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that is how you find peace. You mm -hmm. have to practice. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is lovely. And I love you use, make the choice to make this, this, this color because we don't really have any flower plant that will have this shade of purple. Mm -hmm. This just uh, really, this will really catch people's eye. Yeah. So for people, for viewers who are looking for garden art, so this would be something to think about. Just this, this would be just, this would be like an unwanted stuff in a, in a, in a building, if not because of the creativity from the gardener. So not only in the gardener see the potential, she made the decision with the color and also how well to place this particular item. It now becomes uh, a very, very recognizable signature mm -hmm. touch in this particular garden. So again, this is Fiona, the garden spirit at the Smart Creek Gardens. Yeah, so, so I guess she found peace in mm -hmm. the garden and she loved staying here. And so do I. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Well, thank you again, Cassie, for okay. showing us your lovely garden and also okay. those very valuable tips on container and other uh, garden practice and design. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.